Kanisa. Huyu mama lazima angamishwe. Lazima mambo yake yaadike. Lazima tuuache Aisha. Unakwambia akomba siku ya leo. Wanaenda kuhangaika. Kuna kitu kingine kimetumika hapa hapa kimetuunganisha kiwoja. Hatujakuja hapa kuongea habari zako, hatujakuja hapa kielele. Hatujakuja kuja hapa kupiga story. Hatujakuja hapa sababu ya jambo lingine lolote. Tumeunganishwa na pesa. Hello. Zema amen amen na moja ukituma tunajua saa wewe uko na pesa. Tunaku blacklist ama tukiona bado uko na mood za kuendelea kutoa tunakuitisha tu tena tukikwambia tutakurudishia zote pamoja. Sasa kile umepata message yangu. Na sutume kwanza alafu nikumalizie maombi yako saa hii my sister. Jehova maana unauliza una. Sutume hiyo sadaka alafu nikumalizie shida zangu. When the people reach the breaking point then anything that offers better answer uh, becomes very uh, very useful for them lakini hawa ni pretenders ambao wanastahili kushtakiwa kotini In a country of over 50 million people, Kenya still lags behind many middle-income countries in the world. More than half the population live below the poverty line, and the struggle for basic needs is incredible. For many, the Kenyan dream is to amass wealth, own cars, houses, money, and power. And to tap into this need, today churches are emerging promising all this but only if one can trust and obey and give generously. It is almost difficult even for the Kenyan government to keep count of the number of mushrooming gatherings meeting all over in the name of God. Every other day, independent churches are emerging, new prophets anointed, and this environment just keeps expanding. And this dream is buoyed up by what is now popularly now referred to as the prosperity gospel. A gospel that views prosperity as a sign of spiritual blessing here in Kenya. Preaching has just become big business. Mambe here hit a contacto. My God, my God, my God, it's so tough. It would almost look like a scene cut from a movie or simply a skit. Jesus! Almost dramatic, almost laughable. But yes, this is happening. He's breathing. Hey! This man died since Friday. Hey! This is perhaps the latest religious stand that has grabbed the attention of many. A South African preacher, Pastor Alf Lukau of the Alleluia Ministries International, lays his hands on a man lying in a coffin. Man of, is commanding life. The man immediately resurrects from the dead. The video goes viral. His followers rejoice and call this a miracle. He's an awesome God. There has not been a shortage of these bizarre happenings lately, even here in Kenya. Early 2000, a preacher emerges in Nairobi, calling herself the true prophetess of the Lord. She establishes one of the biggest Christian followership in Nairobi. But just as things were about to take off, she's jailed for two years for cheating a congregation. Prophetess Lucy Duta hit the headlines after she was found guilty of offering fake HIV cure through miracles to make money. Those who had been healed by the prayers went for further testing only to realize that their status had not changed. She was released in 2010. <laughs> then came her own son, Prophet Dr. Victor Kanyari. He stormed into the scene keen to improve on the tactics employed by his mother. Kanyari opted for some science. He would use potassium permanganate which turns purple when dissolved in water to cheat his believers that he possessed superior powers to help them prosper in life. Really Dr. Victor Kanyari, Dania Bitia Jackie B. The Salvation Healing Ministry preacher has since rebranded to Bishop Mwangi. Is keen for a comeback. And even with mounting public anger at the time to have him arrested, the police let him scot free on grounds that no one had formally lodged a complaint against him 
Several years later and the Nduta Kanyari dynasty is not letting go. Deep in the sprawling slums of Kayole is another member of the family trying to find his big break, Kanyari's younger brother, Apostle Jackson Wawero of the Ufunu Ministries. <laughs> Classical case of three members of the same family, three different ministries, all preaching in the name of God. For quite a while now, I have been following Wawero's ministry at his Ufunuo church at Nyama Villa area in Kayole Estate. His congregants believe that he has immense powers to solve their problems. But does he? <laughs> Prophet Wawero's preaching does not start or end on the podium. I'm given hints of a hideout deep in Kayole where Prophet Wawero prepares his sermons. We've been asking residents around here to tell us where, whether they know whether this person exists in their neighborhood. And yes, this is the neighborhood. As you can see, the door is still locked, but there are activities going on given the kind of noises that we've been hearing from this particular end. A group of men and women are busy at work. This is the powerhouse, and this, the prayer warriors. Apostle Wawero and his pastors preach on one of Kenya's local televisions. He displays his contacts, and then people call in to receive their miracles. And this is where the game begins. They have been employed to solicit money from people through phone calls. You have to collect quite enough to be guaranteed of a better commission. Hello? Hello? I have managed to convince some of the prophet's employees to capture the inside proceedings. And indeed, in a matter of hours, Wawero is seen making his way here. On a good day, he could make as much as 200,000 Kenyan shillings just from this. Well, this is Nyama Villa area here in Kayole, and it's been forever really trying to catch Jackson Wawero, the apostle at Ufunuo. And today we want to be part of the congregation and see whether we can put the hard questions to him. <laughs> On this solemn Sunday, Christians have gathered at the Ufunuo church ready to receive their blessing. Inside the church, I noticed some of the faces earlier shown to us in the powerhouse footage. It's unbelievable. It is not a very good day for me. Prophet Owero is not in the building. Part of our crew outside the church, however, notice him from a distance. It looks like someone has tipped him off that there are unwelcome guests in the church. He stays away. A crowd is starting to mail around him. We sense danger and have to leave promptly. Two of the girls working for Wawero in the powerhouse agrees to open up. When KTN News Crimes and Investigations Unit requested an interview with Prophet Wawero, he declined. In fact, he went ahead to destroy my cameraman David Srengo's equipment. Today we are meeting in court over this case. Notice how Prophet Wawero has dressed to conceal his identity in court. He's not in his usual suits. He has been released on bond, and some of his workers are here to stand with him. I raise the Holy One! I raise the Holy One! In Kenya, preachers are some of the country's most famous celebrities. The commander following like no other. Some reckon 
that Christians are not to question acts of men of God. They are revered. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. At the Jesus Teaching Ministry Center, we meet another preacher, Apostle Peter Manyuru, a man riding on a crest of a wave. He claims to have special anointing which he sells at a price for blessing even to his poor congregants. Testimonies offered in this church follow a particular trend that point to some element of coaching. ATM. Kwa hakika mimi ni miona mengi yale mungu wa mentendea. So wananja ITM. Mtumia anointing mzuri na muombe na mungu wa tamuonekania. Zia ITM. Hata we pia kupitia mafuto watakao jipaka. Kama ni magonjwa yote ya tatoka katika jina la Yesu Christo. He turned down our request for an interview. He tells his congregants that it is only through giving that evil spirits can depart from them. Somebody say amen. amen. They make covenant so that when you go down, they are going up. But today, we are reversing it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we dedicate today, yes. I prophesy to you, yes. whatever is working against you, yes. it is destroyed in Jesus' name. Yes. Destroyed in Jesus' name. Yes. Destroyed in Jesus' name. Can you say more fire? More fire. Offerings are made in special envelopes. Today I'm attending one of his midweek services. Visitors must first report to this desk. And here, the first thing I'm given are these envelopes. This lady wants me to put a thousand bob in each of the envelopes as an icebreaker to unlock my blessings and initiate me into the church. <laughs> And more and more people desperate for blessings are coming in. I asked to be directed to the apostle's office to deliver a letter requesting for an interview. He's currently rated as one of the richest pastors in Nairobi. Contents of this magic oil have never been made public. Uh, you know, we are living in, a, um, in an environment of rapid socioeconomic change. And people have needs. And people need answers to their questions. Here yeah, questions about uh, economy, questions about poverty, questions about sickness, questions about uh, generally prosperity and doing well. And this is the time when people are most vulnerable to any suggestions, any suggestion that uh, promises or gives them hope. So I think religion comes in as very handy uh, as a way of giving people hope uh, beyond what they can explain. So I think that that is, a, uh, I would say that this is a time of um, much vulnerability among people in Kenya as in, in, in other parts of the world. Is the, the administrators and bishops or whoever there is office. Mm. So you it's not until a lady bishop in the ministry of prophet Dr. David O'War of the Repentance and Holiness Ministry came out to speak about her ordeal in the hands of the prophet that someone gathered courage to open up. Tell her what has happened. Dr. O'War said to be a scientist brands himself the mightiest prophet of the Lord. And when he turns out for his meetings, his followers have to prepare the way for him. His security detail, bigger than those of most senior state officers in Kenya. But some of the prophet's pronouncements have left tongues wagging. Had we tag a mighty prophet like than Jesus, the only prophet that we can say the wamwanzo na mwisho ni Yesu, aliekufa na kafufuka na kwamba atarudidena. Hakuna mukubwa kuliko uyu. He himself called him. He presented. 
I meet a former pastor in the OWAR ministry. He requests to have his identity protected for his own safety. He served in the ministry for over a decade, but over time he has doubted his spiritual standing, forcing him to quit. Teaching there, you are taught to exclude yourself with others. Because now you are born again, others are sinful. Whenever unatembea na mtu is not belong to your church, it is like he is contaminating you with sin. Which is totally, totally not, it is not in the Bible. Those teaching are bad. It's not in the Bible. The former pastor's experience is not far from what this former praise and worship member shares with me. I joined the ministry in the year 2013. I can't remember exactly the date, but it was in uh, the main month of uh, May. Just like the former pastor, he chooses to remain anonymous. There is an obsession with uh, Dr. Uwar. Once you join any ministry, now you have become a center of this cult. You have become, as, I don't know, you, you have been radicalized now. You have to be radicalized. You have to believe in a war. You have to literally worship the man. You have to call him mightiest, mightiest. You have to call him the most transfigured, the most revered. Failure to do that, you're seen as a, an outcast. You're seen as a letdown to the ministry, a letdown to the department. So um, you generally have to worship the man. And um, I, I, felt, I felt like, I felt disoriented at that point. And that is when I started questioning so many things. Dr. Uwar claiming that he is the only way to heaven and that you must believe in him for you to enter heaven. That is something that is not in the Bible. That is something that Jesus never taught. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then Dr. Uwar comes here and tells you, you have to believe in me for you to enter heaven. Yeah. He even condemned all the churches. He said all the churches are headed to hell. I wonder where he got that from. Chakula kilikuwa kinaletwa hapa. Manake tu kama kanisa zingine watu wangeleta sadaka. Na wakileta sadaka tulikuwa tunajaza hapa. Na hii mahali yote A couple of years ago this man too was right in the inner circle of prophet of war. He has huge reservations about the prophet. Those in the repentance and holiness ministry believe that he possesses divine powers to even resurrect the dead. He raised or resurrected Mama Rosa. He believed that was a scam. Even uh, one of the doctors who was senior there, uh, he said there was a conversation whereby they wanted to report. So the, the mother was suffering, Mama Rosa was suffering from arthritis, arthritis of heads and legs. So that arthritis ilikuwe meingia mpaka kwa nafs. So wakati tuliambiwa tuli, tuli alikufa, alikuwa kwa koma. Alikuwa kwa koma, hakuwa mekufa. Because I believe in the Bible, those people who died, and reselected. Uh, there's nothing recorded about what they said about hell. So only those people who internet uh, said about about hell, on Christ Christ uh, said about hell. Why this person now? Even what he, she was saying, it was was a direct to, to uh, direct to, to do what uh, to, to say. He was guided how to say. Yeah, she was guided how to say. Mm. Yeah, she was not dead. Mm. She was not dead. She was in a coma. Take some time to verify who under whose name the property is. All the properties are hers, unless they have since been sold by some people. Be Bishop Jane Njagi's family has narrated how their daughter was duped into the ministry more than a decade ago, ditching her legal profession to join the war ministry. The family says she was dragged into the war ministry to act as a financier. For the first time, you are gaining entry into this massive apartment here owned by Jen Jaggi, who was once a bishop in the ministry of uh, David O'War. Well, David O'War used to reside here, not just him, but also some of his bishops. We are told by the family that they used to stay here and used to do most of the activities here. In fact, on my right side is part of the offices that we are told used to house his main activities. So we are here to establish and talk to some of the people that were part of this particular ministry kula kwa nabii wa Mungu pamoja na maaskofu ambao walikuwa wamekuja pamoja naye kwa sababu walikuwa wanaenda kutafuta visa ya kutoka kwa nchi nje ya nchi kwa sababu ya mikutano ambayo inafanywa nje na alikuwa asimame pale riverside kwa sababu ya kinywaji ama chakula so nilipewa instructions nikaambiwa nini nitatengeneza na nikatengeneza kahawa na chai pamoja na uh, scones kulikuwa na tea items ambazo zilikuwa pale nikaambiwa nizitengeneze lakini sio mimi nilipika zilikuwa zimeletwa pale kama sadaka so nilizitayarisha 
na nikai present na wakakunywa chai kabla ya kutoka aliomba apewe awekewe zingine ili abebe aende nao nyumbani na hivyo ndo tulifanya mambo haya yote nilikuwa nafanya siku peke yangu nilikuwa na askofu ambaye ni msaidizi wake na tulipofanya haya maneno uh, tukamaliza kupak na kabeba na kaenda basi siku inayofuatia nilipokea simu nikitoka kazini nikaambiwa ni siku ya kazini paka wakati nitaitwa nikawa nimeshtuka kidogo maana siku jua ni nini imeendelea hapo ndio nilikuja nika, nikajaribu ku insist kujua ni nini imefanyika nikaambiwa pana kuna shida imetokea na nabii amekuwa kiumwa na tumbo hata amekuwa kitoa damu inaonekana kulikuwa na shida na chakula kumbuka nikipokea hii simu sikuambiwa ni sumu niliambiwa tu kuna shida ya chakula na simu zilifuata kama tatu nilipigiwa na askofu mkuu na maaskofu wengine na nilipo, nilipigiwa hii simu nikiwa kwangu nyumbani unaweza tu kuimagine mshtuko ambao nilikuwa nao how bad is your Many have always questioned how a man leading a flamboyant lifestyle could run his affairs without asking for offerings from his followers. The family told journalists that some of the bishops in Prophet of War's ministry were occupying Jagi's property without paying a dime. This while also controlling the bishop's personal bank account. Since his humble beginnings in Nakuru, Owar has styled himself as Kenya's most charismatic preacher. He rarely accords TV interviews. But when he does, he directs the line of questioning. Some areas are not to be touched. This was in 2013 when television host Jeff Koinange hosted Dr. David Owor. Why does he keep that beard? No, no, okay, Jeff. It's, it's, on, it's no, on Twitter. No, no, listen to me, Jeff. We agreed on this interview. <laughs> there are certain red lines okay. you cannot cross. All right. Because now Kenya has advanced our conversation. She's mature, yeah. you know. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Let's move on. Let's move on. And only you, only you I can allow you to say such a thing though. Thank you my brother. Because if it were someone else I would walk out of studio. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Even before he began his repentance ministry, a war had already courted enough controversies. Today he's fighting in a USA court to convince the judiciary that he wasn't part of a rape claim leveled against him in September 2002. At the time working for the Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration in the office of the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute is said to have induced a co-worker with excess alcohol later taking advantage of the situation and sexually assaulting the lady in question we made efforts to reach prophet to war for response but our efforts went south our investigations unit contacted some of the wealthiest churches in town but none was ready to accord us an interview we wanted to know what they think of the attempt to regulate churches in Kenya they all declined to speak to us among others they contacted a flamboyant couple taking Nairobi by storm the reverend Alan and Kathy Kuna they have built an empire in the last couple of years and said to be riding high in the ministry and they have no qualms posting pictures of their larger than life status they call these blessings <laughs> There is Reverend Lucy Natasha, founder and overseer of the Prophetic Latter Glory Ministries International. Her followers call her Kenya's hottest female pastor. She's eating life with a big spoon, driving big cars, complete with a flamboyant team of bodyguards. She's setting the bar for others. She couldn't comment on her newfound riches. Asking your intervention and uh God says that you 
come to me and submit yourself and pray. And the more controversial one, Apostle James Mainanganga, he tells his congregations of how God redeemed him from the streets as a hawker, his stints in prison, and his struggle with drugs. He has quoted enough controversies, including accusation that he killed a woman in a road accident in Lemuru driving his Range Rover sport machine. Today, he features in the list of the wealthiest preachers in town, and there are many more we contacted. And even some foreign preachers have also found fertile ground in Kenya. Some have opened permanent churches with branches across the country. I'm seeing the court here in this divorce. 2018 at the Kasarani Indo Arena, Nairobi, a huge Christian gathering was getting underway. It was dubbed three days of angelic visitation. This Malawian preacher from South Africa was the star feature. Shafad Huxley Bushiri, popularly known as Major One, by his followers. You, where from? From Nigeria. You, and we also. In his so-called prophecies, he wows his crowds by purporting to give personal details of his congregation shown by God. The founder of the Enlightened Christian Gathering has amassed immense wealth in just a short period of time. Today, he is needed by a South African court for money laundering and fraud. In news just in, controversial prophet Shepard Bushiri has been arrested for fraud and money laundering. ENCA's Tsehohacho Moachi joins us now. Religion remains a sensitive subject in the Kenyan society. In fact, a grey area. No one has found the courage to question the conduct of church leaders. Mm. And, uh, and the knowledge that I should share. But amidst the murkiness, someone is now thinking along this line. Kangema, member of parliament, Moturi Kigano is preparing a motion that could just change the landscape. So my motion proposes to make any church that seeks to propagate Christianity to conform with several uh, parameters uh, be accountable Show us audits, audited accounts. Let's see what uh, the money is all about. Show, demonstrate sense of uh, or element of charity before you go to claim tax rebates from KRI. school fees, <laughs> For example, Eighty percent of Kenyans are Christians, and this percentage has been bulging every day. And although no one has outright judgment of how religion works, some preachers will, however, have you thinking twice before planting that seed. My name is Francis Otomoa for the Inside Source.